Hey and welcome to my new series about Arduinos. Before we start coding and making robots, it's important to have a solid understanding of Arduinos and microcontrollers in general. So today we will cover the following. What are microcontrollers? What is an Arduino? Then we will discover some Arduino boards. Then we will see what makes an Arduino. Then we will finish with a little bonus. A microcontroller is basically the brain of your system. Now microcontrollers are used everywhere to control complex machines like robots or to just simply turn on and off some LEDs. Keep in mind that microcontrollers lack the processing power for AI and image processing. At least the majority does. So we use a single board computers such as the Raspberry Pi that contains a powerful microprocessor. If you need more infos about microcontrollers and microprocessor, let me know in the description below and I will invest in some videos. Now let's leave it for the future and let's start talking about the Arduino. So now let's start with the main dish. What's an Arduino? I will pause the video for 3 seconds, then I will start explaining. I assume you read it. So let's break it apart. First, let's highlight the main keys. We have open source, hardware, software, Arduino programming language, and Arduino IDE. I will talk about open source later. Now focus on hardware and software. Arduino is a company. As a company, they have a product. By hardware, we mean the main boards, which we will talk about in just a second. And by software, we mean the Arduino IDE aka integrated development environment. I made a whole video about the IDE, I will upload it very soon. Arduino uses what's called wiring programming language. Many people mistake it for C or C++, while in fact it's actually the combination, it's the mix between the two. Now feel free to search about it more yourself. Open source refers to any program whose source code is made available for user modification by users or developers, meaning that I am as a company, I will put my product as an open source, meaning I am ready for anyone who wants to take the challenge to modify it or make his own version from it. For example, Linux is an open source, meaning that I can download Linux, for example, one of its flavor, let's say Ubuntu, and I can change and modify it as much as I want without having to worry about Ubuntu's company coming and suing me. For example, the Arduino boards are open source, meaning the Arduino company gave you the access to the diagram, to the schematic, and you can make your own Arduino boards. And in the future, we will be creating and making our own Arduino version. So stay tuned, maybe consider subscribing and supporting me. Many people mistake Arduino boards for microcontrollers, while in fact it's a development board. It contains a microcontroller, but with additional component to make it run and to make it easier for us to program it and to interact with it. Now let's have a look at some examples of Arduino boards that you might find yourself using in the future. We have Arduino Pro Mini. It's a small inside, so it's perfect for small robots, but it needs an additional hardware to program it. It's this thing right here. We have the Arduino Nano. It's relatively small and it's my favorite. We have the Arduino Uno. This is the most popular with beginners since it's easier to access the pins than the other Arduinos, but it's a bit large in size. Lastly, we have the Arduino Mega. It is the biggest and has more pins and more functionalities. Of course, there are more and more of Arduino boards, but it is not practical for me to state them all, but go check this link, I will leave it in the description, and you can have a look at the original and authentic Arduino boards. Note in this series, we will be using various Arduino boards, but mainly we will stick with the Arduino Uno, so if you want to follow up, get yourself an Arduino. Now I will leave in the description a link where you can get it in Tunisia for cheap, and I will stay to link where you can get it out of Tunisia for cheap as well. Now let's have a look at what makes an Arduino. So we will see the different components and understand their main functionalities. We use V connector. We use this to upload the code that we wrote to the Arduino using the Arduino IDE. I will talk more about it in the future. 
we have 7 to 12 input DC, we can connect it to a battery to remotely power Arduino. Now make sure that it is lower than 12 volt if you don't want to risk burning your Arduino. And we don't want that to happen, do we? Note that the USB will also provide 5 volts, so if you connect it to your PC, it's gonna get its power from there. Now we have the general IO pins. We use this to do various things, from controlling LEDs, to reading the temperature of a sensor, and to communicate with your computer. We have a debug LED. It's a serial LED built into the board. It's actually connected to the pin 13, this one right here. Note that each pin has a number or a letter associated to it. We use those number and letters to actually state its function. More on that when we start coding. We have a built-in serial to USB circuit. It's very important, without it your computer will not be able to recognize your Arduino. I will talk about it and about the bootloader in the next video, so stay tuned. We have a reset button. A reset button, many people mistakes for a button that actually delayed your program, while in fact its name is reset button and its function is to start your code from the beginning. And lastly, we have the microcontroller itself, the Atmega 328P. It's the responsible for executing and storing your code. With it, we will make various stuff from robot to security systems. So make sure to stick around and maybe consider subscribing. Well, with this, you are ready to go and watch the next video. But I would like to give you a bonus, some information about the Atmega 328P microcontroller unit. Now feel free to skip it if you are not interesting, but it is worth the time. The Atmega 328P, the Arduino Uno, Nano and Arduino Pro Mini are 8-bit microcontrollers. All Arduino boards has 8-bit microcontrollers with the exception of the Arduino Duo that actually has 32-bit microcontrollers which offer more feature and more processing power. To learn more about Arduino Duo, you can visit their official website. Now, an 8-bit microcontroller, meaning that you can handle 2 to the power of 8 bits, which is equal to 255 data bit. It can be either 0 or 1. Basically, we have 8 bits, 16 bits, or 32 bits microcontrollers. The more bits you have, the more powerful your processing speed will be. That's why, for heavy processing power applications, in most cases, an 8-bit microcontrollers will work fine, but in case one day you decide to work with data analysis or image processing, an 8-bit microcontroller will either lag or will just crash under the heavy load of data. But no worries, you can always use something more powerful. Now, if you want to learn more about 8, 16-bit and 32-bit microcontrollers, check the link in the description. Now we hit the end of this video. Now consider putting a like on my Facebook page and maybe consider subscribing so you will not miss the future videos. Now peace.